to my channel my name is Dion we start here with chapstick this is the crazy troll nation of YouTube we're going to do another um, this is on this eye this is on the other eye look a while ago this is way long overdue sparkle cake face on Instagram she had asked about a comparison between haunted Europe from nomad and the 669 palette for Martine Cosmetics and I said that if I did the look and this was forever ago so I do apologize um, that I would tag her in the video and on Instagram when I posted pictures looking at it it was more challenging than I thought because even though the color story does look similar the finishes are so different and even though we have this shade here and this one down here this is a shimmer this one is a dual chrome so and even with this green here this is a dual chrome so you would think that might go with one of the greens in haunted europe but it doesn't and even this top shade here that looks like it might go with one of the golds that's a dual chrome so it doesn't go with the golds in haunted europe so it was quite challenging but i did find four shades that i think may go together or may look similar enough to do a look with and so we're going to do that i did my brows with the l'oreal brow pencil i have nyx retractable eyeliner and brown on my lower lash line and also my lower inner rims for primer i used the fenty and for the foundation i used number 335 it is perfect for me and i am loving it that is the only thing on my face, yes. And after this, there's something else I'm going to do, which is why I did not set my face. I don't have on any blush or bronzer. But look at my skin, though. Does it not look like there's something going on? You still see a shine, like where the light naturally hits it. It looks like it's highlighted a little bit. My natural contour it looks like it's something there, and it's not. So don't be too hard on yourself or feel like you need to do certain things, because when you look at your face... Even just with foundation on and even with our foundation on, you still have the highlights and the low lights and all of that stuff. I'm going to prime my eye and get into it and we will come back and start the look. I'm not going to call out the names of the shadows because then you will know what palette it is. But I will show you we're using two brushes for each color. I believe for lid we're going to flip these around but we're going to use the same brushes for each side and just to try to keep things even and not say well this showed up this way because of that brush and it was different from that one so we're going to keep things the same as far as brush wise so this is hourglass number three i started out backward already this shade is going on the second half of the lid i picked up the wrong shade first i love both of these palettes oh my gosh and i'm not going to say any more because that'll give away what palette it is so we're just going to tap this some more up here just to kind of get somewhat of a blend because we put the shadow on this part of the brush as you can see and so we're using the tip of the brush just to tap up here for our blend I'm going to edit out the rest of this process on this eye with the clean hourglass number three we're taking this one on the outer corner over here oh okay troll doing this thing i'm gonna edit out the rest of this process putting this on this side we're going to turn this brush around from this eye and we're taking this shade on the first half of our lid sparkle cake face i will have her instagram down below she does amazing looks she does different eyeshadow shapes with her looks where as i'm kind of one note i do try to do things different every now and then but habit takes over and so i usually just end up with a rounded shape but she'll do a round shape then she'll do a wing um, eyeshadow look and then she'll do a wing liner and she just does really creative things and i really enjoy the looks that she does and the com color combinations excuse me that she does and so please do check her out on instagram and admire her awesome creativity because it really is awesome I love seeing her um, pictures on Instagram. Ooh, we're going to blend in between. This lid is done, except we're going to blend a little bit. I may or may not have a transition shade because that'll just make 
<laughs> both eyes even darker which is what you get with these two palettes right right flipping over the brush with this shade we're going to put this on the first half of this lid oh we i'm gonna edit out the rest of this process i'm going to go back with the brush that i use for primer and foundation because i do have fallout right here and it is not brushing away Maybe because I didn't set my face, maybe not, I don't know. And it was from this shade right here. Yeah. We have two Isom T37s. I don't know why I thought this was going to go here, but it's going to go there. You know what? That kind of looks nice. And it does break up all the grayness, even though this is like a, a gray look. <laughs> I'm going to edit out the rest of this process. I'm going to lightly feather over just a little bit. Taking a clean one over here, pointy side down, pointy side in the corner. Hmm. Okay, that's different than this color. I'm going to edit out the rest of... Oh, wow. Wow. I don't know if it's the gray underneath that's making it look this way or maybe my eyes deceived me into thinking this shade was that shade. Hmm. Just going to feather lightly just over. Hmm. I don't think I've done this combination before with either one of these palettes. We're going to take two Fenty brushes. These are number something, 210. And we're just going to blend this up here. We're not going to put a transition shade because it would just make this look a whole lot darker. Um, none of the lighter shades were possible dupes to my eye. And we're actually just going to just lightly blend here, but not a lot because I'm kind of really digging it. And so we've used three of the four shades, one, two, three, four, yeah, on each eye already and the brown is going to go underneath and that'll just be it for this look so really easy really simple this is a clean one and we're just going a small circular motions just to blend this top edge letting the color travel upward just a little bit as we blend and so you don't necessarily need a shade to blend out another shade. You can blend it out on its own. If you're having trouble blending a shade, then yeah, take a lighter, like take a lighter gray to blend out or this whatever color that was, take a lighter one to blend that out. But you don't have to. And I know some people that's their go-to and it's fine. Do your makeup the way you want to. If they place a red, then they'll blend it out with a pink or if they place an orange, they'll blend it with um a yellow but it, you do your makeup how you want to however you want it to look whatever you're comfortable with doing i'm just saying you don't necessarily have to but if you're having trouble blending a shade then you may have to or feel like it's necessary to take a lighter shade to blend it out but something like this like you see how they blend it fine just mm. So try both ways. Try using the shade to blend itself. We're going back. This is this one for this side. We're going back to this one. So just try blending it on its own. And try blending with another shade. And see which way you prefer. We're putting this one down. And y'all think we're done here too. Yeah. So the last thing to do... And I'm not going to do transition, and I did have brushes off of that. We're going to put those away. We're going to take two Esom V31, and we're going to draw a lower lash line. And this is the shade. And we're going to put that. I should have used a thinner brush. The thickness of this brush is automatically going to blow out the shade, which I don't mind, actually. That eye is done. <laughs> and this shade under here. We're going to take our transition brush brushes, excuse me, I can tell which is which because this one has that, this color on it and this one doesn't. So I know this is this side and we're just going to 
this buff under here. I don't think it really needed it. Uh, we're just doing stuff. So the eye look is done except for liner um, and mascara. And so we're going to do that. I'm going to use the Fenty Flight. I'm glad I fell in my lap because I did not feel like getting up. Fenty Flight Liner and because I'm black. And we're going to put on the Scott Barnes Pumped Up Mascara. And then we'll be back figure out a lip. Do we think it's going to be a black lip? No. <laughs> we're going to wipe off some chapstick. We're going to use a Sephora retractable lip pencil. It says Rouge or Rogue Gel Lip Liner. No, I swear sometimes this is in molasses that I can't read. And I have multiple degrees, and so I know I can't read. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. That's a, you know what? It's because I'm a troll, damn it. Okay, I have my moments. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to edit out the rest of this process. I am going to line them and fill them in. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. I really, really like this lip pencil. I kind of feel like I'm getting away from NYX suede matte lip liners because the gel lip liners are so smooth but the only thing is is sometimes they bleed even if they say they're waterproof which i don't think this one does say it it bleeds and whatever i put on top of it whether it's um a gloss or yeah if it's a gloss it'll travel toward my inner lip and then end up smudging my teeth and all of that. Whereas the NYX suede matte lip liners, because they are matte and, and they are dry, whatever you put on it is going to stick. So I don't have an issue with things traveling with that, that I do with the gel liners. But the gel liners are so smooth though. So it's sort of a trade. Use a gel liner and just be okay knowing it's going to travel. The gloss on top will travel. Or use the dry lip liner and know it's going to stay. Hmm. I'm at the side. So that is that, and we are going to top this with. This is my first time using that. We're going to top this with um, Nima Tang Dose of Colors Lip Gloss, and this one is Eden. I think that's one of her pet's names. I forget. So we're just going to, and this is a gloss. Oh, this smells weird. I don't remember if it smelled like this when I first opened it. Damn it. I think I did toss the liquid lip because that was just smelling awful. Either the second or third time I used it. Probably like the third time I used it. Oh, man. I did purchase on 30% off, but still, to so just use it two or three times. So this is our look. My lips are so crooked. And they're naturally crooked. Doing a dark lip just accentuates how crooked they are. And I don't try too much to get them even because I know that they're not. And sometimes the more I try, the worse it gets. Because you can see, still see where my lip line is, whether I overline or not. And for me, sometimes when I overline, it just doesn't look right because the color doesn't look consistent. And so that's why I don't overline. But this is my natural lip shape because I did line with the pencil on my lip line. So this, this is what my lip looks like. And when I talk, I usually kind of go like this. Maybe that's why they look like that. I don't know. I'm stop babbling. So this is the finished look for the eye part. And we're going to experiment with the face with, I was not boo-boo the fool this time because I did get this on sale. The Rouge Cell, Rogue Cell, Rouge Cell, Sephora 20% off thing. And this one is Elephant. And I wasn't going to get it because I had already purchased Tiger, like boo-boo the fool for full price. And I really love it. And I was watching Kinky Sweat's video with this for like the fifth time. And I said, you know, I'm going to get it. And the reason this appealed to me is because... This can be used as a setting powder under eye, this as a highlight, this as a bronzer slash contour, and these are two blushes, and this as a finishing powder all over. And so I like the idea of having everything in one palette. 
um, my Natasha Denona diamond blush glow whatever they don't have a bronzer it has everything else but not a bronzer and that's what appealed to me about Tiger is because I had blushes blush light highlights and a bronzer so this appealed to me for that and I'm hoping I like it I was concerned about these two shades because of the undertone is off this one would make my under eye look darker this as a finishing powder might make my skin tone look ashy or dusty but on her it didn't some foundations we wear the same some we don't and so I was intrigued and also these two remind me of the blushes in the Natasha Denona diamond blush glow whatever palettes one in one and one in the other one so I kind of think I have these and one day I will do a comparison and also I'll do a side by side of this palette elephant with tiger or I'll just use this all over and then second clip do tiger all over so that way we can get everything on I'm going to pull up brushes and we're going to jump into this so the first thing we're going to do this is in Scott Barnes travel highlighter brush and we're going to take this is what she used for setting her under eye and that's why I didn't set my under eye and I'm hoping this looks right <laughs> And the the hourglass powders are supposed to give like a natural finish, blend in, not accentuate texture, and all of that stuff. And so I just I was just really curious, and I wanted to see. And I am liking that. Oh my gosh! I am just now noticing fallout. You see this dark patch, and even like right here. What the hell? Damn! You see what I just did? This is the brush I use for foundation. We're just gonna pull that down. Look at my nose. I didn't even see that till I looked in the mirror here that I had that fallout. How it got on my nose down here, I don't know. Mm. Anyway, so back to this one. <laughs> and I'll write below the number, meaning Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. And I'll also put where I put it. So if you're around my complexion and you're curious at how this will look, I actually, I actually like it. Wow. Wow. I think I'm an hourglass powder convert because the, this one and Tiger are my first ever hourglass powders, except for the translucent setting powder. Now we're going to take, we have two Scott Barnes travel powder brushes. And so for one, we're going to take this. I do just wish the pans were bigger. And we're going to take this one, I'm going to tap that off. And we're going to put this over here as a blush. This is subtle. I do still think Tiger is more versatile or versatile, however you pronounce it. But I like the idea of having the under eye powder and the finishing powder for my complexion, because in Tiger, those shades are way too dark for finishing powder. Um, and one of the highlights serves me better as a blush light, which was still really pretty. So both of them serve a purpose, and I think it depends on, you know, do I want a deeper look, or I could mix them. I can still use this one and that, and use other stuff, excuse me, from the tiger palette so we're going to take a clean one and go into this one here and we're going to put that over on this side as a blush and some were saying the blushes were similar but when you have certain tones they just kind of look that way this one is a little deeper i don't know if i prefer this tone on me but once we get on the contour slash bronzer and the highlight it may look different so this is a lot more subtle this is really pretty this is nice also so it will depend on the eye look I'm going to go back to the brush for this side and we're just going to see if we can build this up a little bit I'm not tapping off this time this is a nice soft shade and now that I'm applying them they do not look like the blushes in Natasha Denona's diamond blush glow palettes because those are super intense and actually the cream blushes are super intense and the powder blushes just seem to just set it so to speak for one of them 
and one of them both of them are just super intense so i do like both of these and you can tell a difference one day the next day would somebody notice no but wearing them both at the same time yes so we're going to put both of those away we're going to take the fenty number 120 and we're going to go into the highlighter which is this one here this brush is perfect for this i do want to get another one of these and the other brush i'm going to show you but i'm going to wait for fenty to have another 25 percent off sale right now as of this recording this is october 30th sephora still has their 20 percent but i know that fenty has 25 and sometimes a little higher and so i'm waiting for that so we're going in to this again and we are coating both sides of the brush and we're going to put that in the same place over here i am a convert i can say i'm loving these hourglass powders and i'm glad that there is finally something the tiger palette that everyone can use and that's why i never purchased hourglass powders before because i was pissed off because they didn't have something for everyone this is nice i like this we're going to take this brush this is the other one i want to get a second one of this is 190 and we're going to go into this shade down here and i have to be careful not to get other colors on the bristles because this takes up the whole pan and more if I'm not careful so we're going to tap that off and this is supposed to be contour bronzer if I'm gonna come down here first just to see what it looks like and keep in mind I didn't set my face I'm loving that glow from the um the highlighter and I'm liking the under eye powder and I think she used a different type of brush to use this as her contour bronzer type brush i mean um y'all know what i mean y'all understand troll right y'all speak troll right so i am going to just grab a different brush what am i going to grab i don't want to take this one <laughs> this is a la Rouge brush because i'm happy with my bougie brushes with the bougie makeup now i'm taking a cheap brush <laughs> All right, so we're going to go into that same shade. <laughs> and we're going to put that right here. <laughs> I'm just making up stuff. Use whatever brushes you want to with whatever makeup you want to. <laughs> I'm just being extra right now. And I do... Hmm, this is subtle. But I do like it. And so if I once subtle this will be it i can use this and not be overly concerned with overdoing it she used a fluffy brush to use it as bronzer then she t i mean as uh, yeah this area and then she took a more dense brush and stamped it as a contour and it did intensify with a stiff brush and so there are different ways to use this and i told you i, I watched her video like five times over maybe like a period of a week and a half and i knew i wanted to get tiger but then i kept thinking like hmm elephant may offer me something too and i was watching someone else's video when they were saying how when you're medium complexion or medium tan and a brand comes out with you know a fair to medium palette and a medium to deep palette it's like because we're in the middle it's like which way do we go and we can usually make them both work it's just depending on undertone too, which is what I was concerned about with these two palettes was if the undertone was going to make me look ashy or dusty or leave like a gray cast on my face, which is ashy and dusty. Um, but surprisingly, this works. The only thing we have left now, and I'm going to take an hourglass. This is not, this is Scott Barnes number 64 brush. And we're going to take the finishing powder, this one here. And so I really do wish the pans were bigger because then I wouldn't have to keep going in. So we coated all sides of the brush and we're just going to finish our face. I don't have a lot of experience with finishing powders because if I set my face, I usually just set my face with um, a setting powder. I've never, to my recollection, 
just went in with a powder like I'm doing now and just putting it over everything to set everything or to finish everything. But it's supposed to just help everything blend together, give your face a natural, even sheen, shine, lit from within glow, blend everything in and everything look like this. So I would need to see if I look like I'm one of the Cullens, if it was sunny outside. But inside, I am really digging it. I do see the bronzer. I do like the blush. like the blush. Love the highlight. So yeah, I, I'm glad I got this. And with the 20% off, I think it was $67 versus the $85 that I paid for Tyra because it was just one of those days I'm like, I woke up and said, I'm going to Sephora. I'm going to buy this and that. And I got up and went and bought this and that. This is the finished look. Thank you for all the babbling that you endured. Seeing me clean up fallout. Seeing me do a new lip combination. Seeing me use this palette for the first time. And being here for me to experiment using two different eyeshadow palettes. I'm putting up brushes. I'm so rude. I did not mean to be disrespectful and ignore you. And not look at you when I'm talking to you. Which usually I'm looking over here which is not where you are. You are right here. I see you. Thank you. And so, which palette is on which eye? Let me open them both up again. This is the Haunted Europe palette. And it was only four shades I thought looked similar enough to do a look based on the color and the finish. And this is Haunted Europe palette. So this is what we have. So similar, yes, but once you get into the nuances of the textures, no, it wasn't really a lot. But I'm loving the look. Oh, check it out. What I did with my wings today. I just went like a partial way over. And I think I'm liking this better than going all the way over. Yeah, so that was my first time doing that. And that was an inspiration from Sparkle Cake Face because she does stuff like that with her liner. Like she just please do check her out. She does amazing looks. She really does. And so I'm going to show you which is where. This is Martine Cosmetics 669 on this eye. This is Nomad Cosmetics. <laughs> Haunted Europe on this eye. So, did you guess it? Did you know? Hmm. Haunted. No. 669 palette. Haunted York palette. Did you guess what was where? And if you did, were you correct? If you have either of these palettes, let me know what you think of them. And you will see me in another video. And thank you, Sparkle Cake Face, for that question of hmm, it would be interesting to see a comparison. And so I'm glad I did it. It was a lot of fun. Thank you all for being here. And something will pop up for you to watch if this is the end of this video. If not, it will be at the end of the video. Because I've been just uploading stuff willy-nilly and connecting clips and stuff. Anyway, thank you for being here and you will see me soon.